I'm wondering what octopus experience might be like if it what it could possibly be like to be an octopus just given that as you mentioned they have such different nervous systems than ours so maybe we could talk a bit about what their nervous system is like and what it might be like to be one yeah it's a pretty big nervous system or big for an invertebrate animal the biggest for an invertebrate animal 500 million neurons or so which puts them in the the lower part of the vertebrate range. It's very different in structure. I mean, it's really an odd, even describing it always seems odd to me. An octopus's brain is a bit like a donut with the esophagus going through the middle. And you've got two large structures behind each eye, which are associated with processing of vision. There's a thing called the vertical complex, sorry, the vertical lobe. The vertical lobe, which is thought to be uh, one of the more, one of the, the areas responsible for more advanced or sophisticated processing. It's not paired in the way that the eye structures are paired and the way that the cerebral hemispheres are paired in us. It's a sort of single unpaired structure. And most of those 500 million neurons in the octopus case are not up there at all. They're spread through the body, especially in the upper part of the, upper part of the arm. So it's a more distributed nervous system. So that's, that's what they're working with. What's it like to be one? Well, if we start from the sensory side, there's, I think it's not too hard to imagine some of what it's like to be an octopus because they're very visual animals, probably, colorblind or mostly colorblind. This is controversial, it's hard to be sure, and I'll get to another element of that in a second, but there's no obvious machinery for color processing in the eyes anyway. Uh, so good eyes built on a camera design, image forming eye like ours, um, and they're a ver very visual animal, probably deaf or near enough to deaf, extreme sensitivity to chemicals, to touch and taste. All those, the suckers on the arms are filled not just with mechanical sensors for sort of shapes and surfaces, but chemical sensors. So everything that's being touched is being tasted. It's not crazy to think of octopus's arms as kind of extensions of their lips in a way, sort of enormous lips. Um, I can sort of imagine that. Everything I touch, I taste. I have good eyes, mostly black and white. I'm deaf. Then we start to get to um, more marked differences. One is the fact that there's no fixed body form, and there's probably a degree of independence in the details of where the arms go. So the phenomenon in which, for you know, animals like us, for everyone, what you sense depends on what you just did or you know, how, how you act affects what you perceive. That's gonna be different in shape for an octopus because a lot of its actions are probably, some of the actions are to a large extent autonomously determined by the arms, but will have consequences for what the brain senses. So your arm can go somewhere you didn't realize and oh my God, I'm tasting this you know, surprising thing over there. So the, the reafferent side of sensing, the effects of actions on the senses will be different. Um, octopuses may be light sensitive across all of their skin in a sort of mild or vague, diffuse way. It hasn't been much work, I think, done on this since an early cluster of interesting experiments some years ago. But let's suppose that's still true. So everything you touch, you taste, you've got not vision, but a kind of light sensing on the skin, you've got good, mostly black and white, or monochrome vision, and you've got this somewhat unruly situation with reafferent sensing. I can imagine all that, I think. <laughs> but when I imagine that, when I try to take the next step, I run into a problem, which is because they have a less centralized nervous system, the idea of a single integrated home of experience, you know, here's my experiential profile now, mine, a single one, this is me, that may be under some tension or stress or that 
feature of our experience may be transformed or absent in them. It might be, well, it might be something very hard for us to think about, a sort of dis, a, a more disunified, less self-focused kind of experience. And I think our imaginative projection, unless you think about, you know, possible inspiration from, you know, half asleep states or psychedelic drug states or other drug induced states, perhaps meditative states. It, it's hard to think about that less selfie side of the octopus experience.